Okay, looks like we are in fact live now. Um, welcome everyone to uh, to the Classical Music Festival uh, hosted by Jam Kazam today. Um, we're delighted that you could all be here with us. And uh, I'm going to hand it off to our first ensemble to go ahead and get started. Fantastic, thank you. Well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Magda, and I'm joined by my friend and cello partner, Robin, and together we are a Mercello duo. Um, we are based in Hampshire, southeast of the UK, and we originally met through Farnborough Symphony Orchestra, of which we are both members. Um, we started exploring cello duets about five, six years ago, and we are still thoroughly enjoying this musical adventure. Um, so today we have four different pieces of music for you. Um, we've got some Kummer, Rachmaninoff, um, we've got some Telemann, and we've also got some Scott Joplin. But um, Robin will tell you a little more about what we are about to play. Robin? Magda. Um... We can't see each other, by the way, so you'll, you'll hear us checking before each piece that we're ready um, and counting into some of the pieces so that we can start them together. But it's been wonderful to play um, live together over Jam Kazam in recent months. So the first piece we've got for you this evening is by Friedrich Kummer, a 19th century virtuoso cellist and composer. Um, Kummer wrote a number of duets for his instrument, probably as something to play with, with his advanced students. Uh, and he treats the two instruments very fairly and equally. So we're going to play the first movement of the first of his three cello duets, Opus 22. Okay, and I'm ready when you are, Magda.
thank you. A uh, little bit disconcerting. My monitor turned off halfway through that. But, uh, <laughs> so excuse me whilst I just uh, get back in. Okay. Um, so now we move on to one of the 20th century's greatest pianists, Rachmaninoff. When we first came across um, this arrangement of part of his third piano concerto, we couldn't quite believe that um, someone had thought to arrange what's a, a notoriously difficult piano concerto for cello duet. Now, having played in the concerto a few years ago with the Palmer Symphony Orchestra, we knew how many notes the pianist had to, uh, had to cope with in the piece. But I think the arranger, Daniel Kelly, has done a brilliant job of, um, of arranging the theme from the first movement of the third piano concerto for cello duet. So I'm ready when you are, Magda. who was a, a contemporary and friend of um, J.S. Bach. Telemann wrote a series of six canonic sonatas where each movement is in the form of a canon at the unison. So this means that there's only one line of music and both players play exactly the same part, just starting at different times, uh, which means that the second player has to remember to stop at the right moment in order to ensure that we, we finish together. So we're going to play the third movement from Telemann's first canonic sonata, in which we're playing exactly the same music, but one bar apart. You'll hear how it works. Okay, you ready, Magda? Yeah.
that's our final piece. We're going to play uh, an arrangement by Daniel Kelly of a Scott Joplin ragtime dance called Heliotrope Bouquet. absolute pleasure and privilege playing for you and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did over to you david <laughs> thank you thank you both magda and robin we really appreciate your playing today it was a beautiful performance and thanks for being here with us <laughs> um, for everyone in the audience um, 
We're uh, appreciative that you're here too. And uh, what's going to happen next is just a view behind the curtain. Um, I'm going to leave this Jam Kazam session with Robin and Magda and jump over into a, another Jam Kazam session with the next uh, ensemble. And during that time, we'll have a little hold video up, um, but it'll take a couple of minutes for us to get transferred across into the next one. So if everybody can just sit tight. One other note, all of the artists are performing uh, free today. But if you are enjoying the music, um, we do have the ability to accept tips for the artists. 100% of any tips will go to all of the artists performing today. And you can tip at paypal.me slash jamkazam or uh, on Venmo at at jamkazam. So thanks for everyone being here. And we'll go ahead and stop this performance and move on to the next. For our next ensemble so let me just hand it off to the next group take it away happy new year to everybody Prost neues Jahr and uh, buon anno we are going um, to play um, a um, sample story of um, different sonatas uh, from the romantic and um, modern period um, we, we are Franziska Jaschke, uh, um, um, a composition uh, orchestra uh, musician. She has played in uh, um, enormous amount of orchestras and uh, she's now teaching in uh, um, the Music Academy in Datteln. And uh, me, Alessio Cita, uh, also um, an experienced musician uh, from. Um, I make music in. Uh, from the three years for now, and uh, uh, we mm, and I teach at the conservatory in Düsseldorf and in the music school in Duisburg. Um, our first piece is gonna be uh, the Sonata Undine from Karl Reinecke. And uh, what's very interesting about this sonata, um, it's uh, it's actually uh, a story very similar to that of The Little Mermaid, but I would say it's the horror version of The, li of the Little Mermaid. Uh, in, in this version, actually, Undine, which is the mermaid, uh, is uh, an, an actually as, uh, a mission that's given from her father to marry a man in order to conquer a soul of a man. And uh, there is this very passionate love story uh, but uh, at a particular moment, this uh, man uh, falls in love with another, uh, with another woman, uh, and uh, after um, uh, great um, many times of the story, um, at the end, uh, um, the man decides to marry this other woman, and um, um, the the king of the mermaids tells the mermaid she should kill the man, which she actually, at the end of the story, does with a cursed kiss. And this sonata should represent this story. Uh, a very romantic piece, full of turns, and we are very happy to play it for you. Francisca, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, allegro, eh, allegretto, eh, andante, and Allegro um, um, Presto.
can see that. Yeah. Um, the next piece we are going to play is uh, a very famous one, the flute sonata um, written by Francis Poulon. Uh, I will not say very much about it. Uh, I will just say um, this is considered one of uh, the most played uh, chamber music pieces of all times. It's uh, extremely witty, extremely funny, and uh, can turn again to very sad and uh, very delicate, and again brutal in a very short amount of time. A very exciting piece to hear. Yeah. 
prepared a kind of a bonus piece with uh, very very what's a very very fast movement single movement from the Prokofiev sonata um, this uh, was piece it became so popular it was actually written from flute but Prokofiev was asked to write another version for violin um, and now we are going to play the original version for flute in the second movement Thank you. 
it's uh, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to play for you. Um, this is uh, a really unique experience. This was the first time both of us that we made such a live stream where we actually play together from this from distance, and uh, it's uh, really funny, really unique, and uh, it's nice to reach uh, people all over the world. Yeah, thank you very very much. Thank you very very much. And happy new year. Thank you both so much. That was a wonderful performance. And um, and I just want to, um, in addition to saying thank you to both of you again, we're so glad that you're participating on the platform. Um, I want to remind the audience that it's a free concert, but tipping is encouraged and artists will share in 100% of the tips. So if you can, uh, you are welcome to tip at paypal.me slash jamkazam or on Venmo at jamkazam. Uh, so thanks again. Alessio and Francisca, and have a wonderful day. And for everybody in the audience, we will be back very shortly. Okay, it looks like we're back and ready to go with our next ensemble. Uh, so let me turn it over to the Carnac Quartet and get out of the way. Okay, thanks, David. Uh, let me introduce the band. Susan Alexander on piano, Michael Casasa on violin, Mike Garahan on viola, and myself, Valerie Matthews, on cello. Uh, we're all in the Washington, D.C. area, and I think the greatest distance is between Mike and myself. I think we're about 40 miles apart as the crow flies. Uh, you probably want to know why we're called the Carnac Quartet, and that's because uh, this quartet exists because of Jam Kazam. Each of us knew at least one of the others before the pandemic, um, but we hadn't played uh, together as an ensemble until then. Uh, and like anybody that plays on Jam Kazam, we can't see each other, so we've had to develop a little bit of extrasensory perception. And that reminded us of Karnak the Magnificent from the old Johnny Carson show. Um, and so the, the name was kind of a joke that stuck. And if you're too young to remember Karnak the, Mag the uh, Magnificent, you can uh, do a web search. Um, I'll mention that we intend to donate our share of the proceeds to the Capital Area Food Bank, which provides food support in the uh, Washington, D.C. area. So thank you for donating. Uh, we're using two short pieces as bookends for our program. And in fact, they were conceived as bookends for a film. The Friday Morning Music Club in Washington, D.C. is developing a film to commemorate its 135th anniversary. And they asked two local composers for music to accompany the opening and closing credits. The opening piece was written by Mark G. Simon and is called Friday Morning. Uh, it's based on a four note motive derived from the initials of the club, FMMC, where F and C, of course, are notes of the scale, and M represents me, which is the solfege symbol for E. And the uh, motive sounds like this. And Mark's music incorporates jazz and popular idioms and is just a lot of fun. So here's Friday Morning by Mark G. Simon.
We'll now turn to a mainstay of the chamber music repertoire, the Piano Quartet in C Minor, Opus 15, by the French composer Gabriel Fauré. It was completed in 1879 when he was 34 years old and is grounded in the late Romantic tradition while looking forward to some of the innovations of the 20th century. Uh, we'll play the first movement, marked Allegro Molto Moderato, and the second movement, marked Scherzo. Uh, for I did not leave any grand large-scale works such as symphonies or operas, but the first movement of this quartet is almost symphonic in its scope. Uh, the, scher the scherzo is full of sparkly humor uh, and has a beautiful love song in the middle. And the whole thing has that combination of passion and restraint that we expect from French classical music. So here are two movements of the 4A piano quartet in C minor.
Now to our other bookend, written for the Friday Morning Music Club. This uh, piece called Outro 135 by Jonathan Newmark. And it's predominantly in a, in a snappy 7-8 meter, and it honors the 135th anniversary of the club in that the rhythmic emphasis is on beats 1, 3, and 5 of each bar. Uh, Jonathan has a knack for combining gravity with humor, and I think an emphasis on the humor in this piece. Both of these composers that we've played today have websites, so please look them up and learn some more about their music. And again, our share of the proceeds of this concert will go to the Capital Area Food Bank. So thank you for donating. And here is Outro 135 by Jonathan Newmark. Thank you very much, Carnet Quartet. Wonderful performance, and uh, enjoyed it immensely. Um, I think uh, we will go ahead and I'm just going to remind everybody again at the end of each performance that uh, tipping is encouraged, and you can tip your artists at paypal.me slash jamkazam or on Venmo at jamkazam. Uh, thanks again, Carnet Quartet, and uh, have a great day, and we will uh, go ahead and start prepping our next ensemble.
Okay, we're live with our next ensemble, and I'm going to turn it over to the group. Hi, uh, I'm Michelle Horner from the Brooklyn Conservatory of Music, and we'll be uh, presenting some of our senior Suzuki students today. Uh, some of you might be wondering, what is Suzuki? And Suzuki is a way of learning an instrument from a very young age, the same way that you would learn to speak your mother tongue. So um, the students that are playing today have all been playing since a very young age. And they all started with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. on from Twinkle and the Suzuki repertoire um, goes through nine or ten books so by the end of it you can play something like Recuerdos de la Alhambra. Which is a pretty popular piece. So, um, so we have Suzuki to thank um, for bringing us together. And we have Jam Kazam to thank because um, during the pandemic, that's when we learned all the pieces that we're gonna be performing for you today. So uh, without any further delay, um, we'll be starting out with um, Pavan Opus 50 by Gabriel Fauré. <laughs> Thank you. 
so then as, <clears throat> as the pandemic continued on, we decided we wanted to play more upbeat music because uh, that actually getting together on Jam Kazam uh, really was a lifeline for us. We really felt like a little more normal. Uh, so then we started to play more peppier songs. So this is called Rumba Marica by Thierry Tisserand. Um, is the famous Sounds of Bells by Joao Pernambuco. Who's considered to be the father of the Brazilian Choro style. Uh, the duet part of this piece, actually there's kind of a neat story. Um, when I was taking the train commuting into Brooklyn, I actually struck up a conversation with um, a man who had a guitar, who turned out to be the Ecuadorian um, guitarist and composer, Terry Pazmino. And, um, and so we got talking about guitar, and anyway, he gave me a bunch of his arrangements, and so this will be Terry Pazmino's <clears throat> Sounds of Bells duet arrangement.
now we're tuning back up. The next piece is um, actually by a compo another composer that I got to meet personally. Um, Celso Machado is an Afro-Brazilian composer and performer, amazing musician. And um, um, I got to meet him in the, in the early 2000s. And uh, this is one of his pieces um, called Modinha. Hold on, hold on. I'm not sure that we... I'm going to give one measure for nothing, then come on in. All right, here we go. And um, we also have had fun on Jam Kazam, learning the, some music by the great um, Brazilian um, flute and saxophone player and composer, Pichinguinha. And one thing that's great about the music of Pichinguinha is it's really, um, it's really lively and exciting. And so uh, we want to end with a song that he wrote called Vu Vivendo, which means I'm living. And, um, and that's, that's kind of what we're doing. We are living. We made it through 2020. And we're moving forward. And a uh, big shout out and thanks to 
um, David, Peter, and Seth, and Jam Kazam for helping us to make it through and to move forward. So our last piece, um, and thanks to everybody from the Brooklyn Conservatory of Music as well um, for all of your support. Um, so this is Vu Vivendo by Pichinguinha. <laughs>
All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for the whole group. Um, that was lovely, um, wonderful playing, and thanks for joining us today for the for the festival. It was really a pleasure to listen to you. And um, so have a great afternoon. And let me see here. Uh, sure. We can kind of trade off a little bit. All right. Sounds good. All right. Uh, we're, we're about to go. All right, gents. We're live, and I'm handing it off to you. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Great. Um, so hello out there to everybody. Um, we are the Dynamic Duo. Uh, I'm Trevor New. And uh, I'm Josh is, Henderson. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to playing uh, playing for you today. We have uh, three selections. Uh, the first is the Handel Halverson Passacaglia, which is a violin viola duo, and it's, uh, it's a series of variations. Really cool piece, technically challenging, and I uh, hope you enjoy. All right, Trevor, you ready? Yep. All right, one, two, one, two, ready. <gasps> Thank you. 
Halverson, uh, Pasacalia, violin, viola duo. Um, series of variations. Really fun piece, one of my favorites. Uh, the next piece that we'll be playing is the Mozart. Uh, again, violin, viola. This is what we got here. If you're not familiar, I don't know if Josh, you can hold your instrument up too. Uh, if you're here, you're probably familiar with these instruments, but uh, didn't know the viola is a little bigger than the violin, uh, a little lower. And uh, yeah, so they work really well together. Got some of the highs, some of the lows there. Um, so yeah, this is this next piece is the Mozart uh, duo in G major, and we're gonna be playing the first three, the three movements from that, uh, from this piece. All right. All right. Thank you. 
that was the first movement. That was the Allegro. The second movement is an Adagio. Is the uh, the adagio and this next movement is the rondo which is going to be a little faster Thank you. 
so much yeah thank you for tuning in we have one more an arrangement by trevor and uh yeah we have our uh instagram handles and stuff like that if you're interested in checking out you know more of what we do and uh trevor will explain his last arrangement thank you guys so much for having us yeah so uh yeah this last arrangement is uh of a song called house of the rising sun i'm sure some of you are familiar with it um it's actually the first song that i learned uh, growing up on my first instrument, which was guitar. Um, yeah, so I kind of felt inspired to make an arrangement of this, and uh, I hope you enjoy. It's really a really fun one for us, and thanks for thanks for listening.
Yeah, so much. Happy New Year. Have a wonderful day. Yeah, Happy New Year. Great to play for all of you. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again. Trevor and thanks jo- for having us. Trevor and Josh, thanks so much for being here. That was an excellent performance and loved the arrangement at the end as well. Thanks, guys. Okay, we are live, and I am going to go ahead and turn it over to our next group. Take it away. Thank you. Hi, everybody, for showing up, hanging out, and waiting. If you're still here, we appreciate it. Um, I thought I would say a few words about Alec Wilder, because it seems like a lot of people have never heard of Eric Wilder, of Alec Wilder. He's an American composer. Uh, He died around 1980. And he has a very eclectic style, and he will be the first person to tell you that he doesn't identify with any one type of music. Um, He actually started out popular songwriting. His songs were very well received. Uh, People like Bing Crosby, Ethel Waters, and Frank Sinatra loved his songs. And after making a big splash with that, he went on to start writing for instruments. And he wrote a series of octets that Frank Sinatra thought were just excellent. So Frank actually recorded these octets with himself conducting. Uh, Unfortunately, the recording is very hard to find. I guess it was snapped up by a lot of collectors. But I thought that was interesting that we had Frank Sinatra conducting Al Wilder. Then he went on in the, in the early 50s to start composing for chamber and orchestral ensembles. Um, he, he still insisted on having his own style. He ha- has a great sense of melody. His harmonies are very reminiscent of jazz but he also throws in a lot of counterpoint. So you, you really can't pin him down, which makes him a lot of fun to play. And so we hope you enjoy Alec Wilder's Sonata for Clarinet and Piano, which was written in 1963. Thank you. 
Okay, y'all go right ahead. Thank you. 
Let's go. Thank you. 
thank you. Thanks to everyone for listening. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate having this uh, Jam to Zam software that allows us to play together uh, despite all the current uh, social distancing restrictions and things, things like that. So thank you very much for everything you've done. Thank you, uh, Sally and Robert, very much. Um, that was really and, um, and fun to listen to. Um, so um, thanks again to you all. Thanks to everybody who's out there listening. Um, again, uh, it's a free festival, but we are accepting tips to be distributed to the artists. And you can tip uh, at paypal.me slash jamkazam or on Venmo via at jamkazam. And again, um, Robert and Sally, thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, David. So, hello there, and greetings to Jam Kazam Land and YouTube Land. And my name is Jody Kruskal. I'm playing uh, this Anglo concertina squeeze box thing, you see. And uh, uh, it's I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And I'm Cindy Harris, and I'm playing the diatonic auto harp. And I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Jody, I think we have the unique distinction of playing two instruments that have not yet been played today. <laughs> Rarely played at all. Rarely played at all. <laughs> Cindy and I have been exploring the rich English country dance repertoire. Strikingly beautiful tunes from long ago. We will play four popular dance tunes, or maybe even five, from early manuscripts dating between 1690 and 1799. Our earliest tune is a jig by the great Henry Purcell called Juice of Barley. Juice of barley. Hit it, Cindy. I'm going to hit it, right? Oh, that's a good one. Juice of barley. <laughs> and uh, 1690. Well, the next one we're going to do is a little bit later, 100 years or so later than that. 
It's a sprightly little thing called Bonaparte's Expedition Up the Nile. It was published in 1799, and back then, everybody knew that Napoleon had just invaded Egypt and that the great English admiral, Lord Nelson, had bravely defeated the French ships there and <laughs> sent Bonaparte packing back to France. And what a great celebration for English naval might. And this tune captures the swaggering joy of military pride in victory. Yeah, let's, uh, let's make it a little marchy here, shall we? Ready? I am ready. So am I. Cindy, I love that low note <laughs> on the <laughs> auto harp. I going to say that. Play that again. Play that low right, note low again, note, right? Oh, yeah. That's good, right? I got one, too. <laughs> I love when we both played it at the same time. So um, I could play that tune forever, uh, really, uh, but but we don't have well, a... Let's not. We don't have much time. No, but we don't, have, <laughs> we don't know the composer of it. No, uh, we don't. Uh, to thank them, of course, uh, that would have to be posthumously. Uh, in <laughs> fact, most of the tunes we're playing today were composed by that mysterious musician named Anonymous. Uh, but now on to the next one, which was first published in 1726, and it's called The Old Wife Behind the Fire. And we love this tune for its delightfully moody and modal qualities. Modal tunes just yeah. don't. <laughs> get that modal thing going here. Yeah, I do. It.
That was oh. so good, I almost forgot to stop because I love playing my highest string, right? So you heard my lowest string? Like, yeah, yeah. I don't usually get to play that string. <laughs> That was fun, right? So uh, this is English country dance music. Of course, there's no dancers here, but all of these tunes have a dance that goes with them, a specific dance. And uh, once things get back to normal, you could go and dance them at your local English country dance. And if you don't know where that is, just contact the Country Dance and Song Society in America, and they'll let you know where the closest one is. So <gasps> this was all the rage in the olden days of Jane Austen. It's still done today by this small niche of dance enthusiasts and musicians, and they're active worldwide. Modern English country dance events in America mostly feature live musicians. We're, us dance musicians are reinterpreting <laughs> the old melodies for a new audience of dancers. They meet weekly or monthly in garage halls, church basements across the land. Modern practice for the musical art of playing for English country dancing encourages musicians to improvise and invent ever-changing and dynamic accompaniments to enhance the old tunes. It's a little like jazz. We've got a lead sheet with chords and melody, but we get to play whatever we want. There's no score to read for this. Um, anyway, we want to play uh, Barham Down. It's a merry romp in the odd meter of 3-2. I love 3-2. Yeah. It's, un it's fun. It's fun. It's, a, it's an unusual rhythm. It's actually a common feature, though, of many English country dance tunes. So yeah. here we go. Bar them down. Oh, and Jody, you forgot yes. to say, this is from 1701. Uh, I, we haven't mentioned this, but most of these tunes were notated in that time frame, which I guess technically would be considered kind of Baroque or maybe pre-Baroque. But they were actually probably played before that. It wasn't until around that time that they were written down and collected in various collections. Yeah, Playford, probably the most famous of That's those collections, famous, but there's yeah. there's dozens of them. Um, so here we go. Um, yeah. Let's see. All right, I'm ready. Done. So much fun to play with you, Cindy, in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've yeah. been doing this since March. Yeah. So I think I think we have one more. Good. One more. This is uh this is more in the modern mode. So this is, you know, English country dance. We've been playing some old tunes for you that fit into the Baroque. But actually, they're not all Baroque. Some are still being written. That's right. Well, it's a it's a pastime uh, that 
it's but it's not really an, an uh, of the dancing you know and the playing of this music it's not really an enactment of of this antique fun but rather it continues to evolve and grow it's a, it's a continuing tradition it's never ended um and as not so for our encore we're going to play <laughs> a modern popular tune in this genre called Tom Kruskals. And it was named after my older brother, Tom, who also plays the concertina, amazing. And it was written by Emily Troll and Amelia Mason at Pinewoods Camp English and American Week um, uh, sometime around uh, uh, 2007 or eight. And it, it goes with a dance that's called Sapphire Sea which uh, I've danced in. So have you, Cindy, right? I have danced it. In fact, I have to say that, uh, uh, Jody, you had sent me this tune, I don't know, a number of years ago, and I didn't really like it when you sent it to me. And then, <laughs> and then you I changed your mind. I you? danced <laughs> Sapphire Sea, and the band that was playing this, I'm like, oh, that's how this tune goes. Now I get now it. Now I get it, right. <laughs> anyway, it's beautiful, and we're going we're gonna to play it for you. Here we go. wanted to hear it one more time. <laughs> oh, that's fine, Cindy. I'm, whatever you say, I'll do it. Um, so, everybody, thank you so much. Uh, we are Parallel Play. You can hear us on SoundCloud, and maybe we'll, in the, we'll uh, after we get off of this, we'll put in the chat what all the tunes that we played were, in case you want to follow up them, and maybe our, our um, uh, the URL for our SoundCloud channel. But Happy New Year, everyone. Happy thank you, Happy New Zam. Year to everyone. Thank you, Cindy and Jody. You're I welcome. had a grin on the whole time you were playing. So. <laughs> had a grin on. <laughs> well, I saw people posting in the chat that they were feeling like they should dance. So they good, should. I know. I encourage that. I may have jigged Everybody around does. the kitchen table here. <laughs> Great. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Bye now.
eyes all the way, although I can't see you. I can feel you. I can feel you. Okay, looks like we are live, and I will turn it over to y'all to go. Hello and welcome. We are the Steve Lacey Project. We're presenting a program of music by Steve Lacey, saxophonist, some classical in form and some freely improvised and notated. I am Diane Richardson, soprano, from Placidas, New Mexico, Steve Duke, saxophone, from Chicago, Illinois, Danny Faith, percussion, Chicago, Illinois, and Michael Drexman, contrabass, Corrales, New Mexico. Our first selections are Steve Lacey's Free Miniatures, numbers two through five, freely improvised and based on thematic material. <laughs>
Traditional Rhymes, Opus 17 by Anton Weber and Steve Lacey recorded these pieces solo uh, in his Santa Park. And it's the lyricism and the improvo that connect both Anton Weber's and Steve Lacey's work. <laughs> selection. Steve Lacey, one of Herman Melville's last poems, circa 1890, entitled 